that really was such a fantastic time because um, they'd never played Spurs before and they were, uh, Venables was the manager, they got our dealers there and <clears throat> they were a big name team of course, Waddle was playing and uh, that build up, you know, from a newspaper point of view was, um, was really quite something. At the time I thought, well, it'll be a good day but there's no chance of beating them. You know, I just thought, we're a little club, you know, you don't beat teams like Tottenham. I think leading into the week, the, uh, we played Spurs, we'd never really given ourselves a chance. We thought, well, as long as we don't get embarrassed and put up a good fight, then uh, really we, we can uh, do ourselves a bit of justice. And of course on that day, I mean, the thing that saved them probably was the weather, where the weather was so appalling it wasn't true. Might have even been played uh, in, in, in today's climate. It rained and it rained and it rained. And I remember BBC were here, of course, for match of the day. And uh, I remember they did, um, uh, a preview with John Raj on the pitch, and he sort of, you know, his foot sunk into the uh, into the turf, almost up to his up to his uh, ankles, if you like. And Tony Gabra said, "Well, you know, how was this suit you?" And he just said, "Well, I'm just hoping it carries on raining." You see, because Venables came along, walked straight onto the pitch, and his sunk and his foot, you know, obviously sunk in. And the first thing he did was to leave our dealers out. Sat in the dressing room. And uh, we used to be out in the dressing room, we used to be able to look out from the toilet windows and you, you could virtually he see all the crowd going past and uh, that it, the noise was deafening coming out of the, the dressing room. I think everybody was queuing getting the toilet before we actually ran out on the pitch and uh, that was a magnificent sight for especially somebody local like myself to, uh, to run out on a pitch that uh, failed park was full. It was, uh, a great occasion, uh, something I'll, I'll, I'll treasure always. I don't think Spurs actually fancied it. Um, the pitch was uh, rather heavy. I remember Ossie Ardellis and uh, Teddy Van Der and several of the Spurs fans walking out on the pitch. And really, uh, you could tell when they came up the tunnel that they were not really up for it. They didn't really fancy uh, this contest. And uh, you just felt maybe that was one point up to Port Vale. And uh, they'd possibly won the, the battle there, the psychological battle. Tottenham's reaction to the state of the pitch has been to leave out Osvaldo Ardiles and bring in 19-year-old Neil Ruddock wearing number four for his first game since he broke a bone in his foot back in November. Port Vale may be struggling at the relegation end of Division 3, but over half the team have experience of first division football. Notably, number five, Bob Hazel, who actually played against Tottenham in the FA Cup final of 1982 for Queen's Park Rangers. I do remember myself and my partner in crime, Bob Hazel, um, we were playing at the back and uh, Clive Allen was up front and a ball got played to Clive's feet virtually on the halfway line in the first five minutes. Of course you couldn't do it these days because you get sent off but uh, me and Bob always had a, uh, had a go where one of us would have a go first and then followed by the other centre half. Uh, I clattered into the back of Clive Allen, it wasn't a dirty tackle, it was just a hard tackle. Uh, got a little bit of ball and a lot more of him and he went spinning down into the mud and he, he landed virtually, I don't know where it happened, but he landed by Bob Hazel's feet and as I was picking myself up I, I can virtually see Bob now with his finger on Clive Allen's nose and saying you'll be getting that for the next 90 minutes and Clive just went white, white as a ghost and uh, consequently what happened, Clive Allen went to play on, right, on the right wing which suited us because me and Bob had got nobody to mark and it became it was a piece of cake, really. David Scott at Burnley, the referee. And Tottenham anxious to start this uh, fourth round cup tie. Clive Allen, the player who'd encroached and just delayed the start a couple of seconds. Well, Tottenham, the beaten cup finalists from last season. This, realistically, the only trophy that they have left to play for. The ball pumped forward there by Fennick for Moran to chase. And Mark Grew gets his first touch of the ball. And that kick has hardly carried to the halfway line in the fierce wind that's blowing down the field into Mark Grew's face. And Tottenham have to defend in the first minute. Just Kevin Steggles to pump it forward. Earl missed it, and he gets a second go. Well, there was no offside. Tottenham signalled for it. And some anxious looks towards the linesman. Eight there, Robbie Earl. Port Vale, of course, with the tradition of having got to the semi-finals of the FA Cup as a third division side back in 1954. When they 
completed the giant killing act of that season, beating the FA Cup holders Blackpool in the fifth round. But here comes Moran, Waddle's in the middle. He's pulled it behind them all, Allen. Now Waddle, it's easy. Oh, he's missed it. Waddle had a chance to settle at Tottenham at the start of this difficult cup tie. Moran, who had the space on the left, well, he cut it behind Waddle initially, but Clive Allen was there. He couldn't quite get in a shot. And as the ball bubbled in the mud, Waddle had a good opportunity and toe poked it just wide of the post. Well, how costly might that prove? Oh, that's a poor back pass. Neil Ruddock, I think he's rather fortunate he didn't beat the goalkeeper and score. Tottenham showing one or two signs of nerves in these opening few minutes, and especially after Waddle's miss at the other end. That was Sproson. Now Paul Moran, he's taken a good look around and decided he can keep possession and make progress to the halfway line. Now faced by Steggles. Waddle. Again, oceans of space for the Tottenham players, and this time Paul Allen had come forward into the offside position. Well, two incidents there that maybe really illustrated the players' uncertainty with the conditions and the state of the pitch. First of all, Waddle's miss that could have put Tottenham ahead, and then Ruddock's back pass. Forward by Fennick, again offside. Referee's looked, but he's allowed play to go on. And Parks has had to come out of his area. Didn't quite like the uh, contact that Beckford gave him. Steggles. And this time it's easy for Tony Parks. Sprossen won the header. Well, it's... Uh, it's up for grabs at the moment. Now Earl. A little flick forward. Ruddock's there. And Beckford was strong. Oh! Well, it's another corner. And again, Ruddock was the player. Or was he trying to put it back to his keeper? We've got them rattled, there's no question about that. I think um, as soon as Ruddock put a few corners out, give a few back passes away, give us corners. Uh, going up for the corner set pieces, you could hear Mabbott, who was their captain, he was rallying his troops, uh, trying to get them steady, trying to steady the ship. And obviously myself and Hazel were spreading the word that they're rocking. They're not, they don't fancy it. Mitchell Thomas didn't know whether he's coming or going. And you could see it in their eyes, they, they just didn't know. This is coming all the way to Steggles. Yes, deflection, it'll be another corner if that goes. Yes. Michael Cole shot off the feet of a Tottenham defender. And it's going to be a long 90 minutes for Tottenham. Cole and Beckford both around the near post. Oh, and that's a poor corner. Oh, Gary Ford played in the York City third division side that beat Arsenal in the cup a couple of seasons ago and then drew with Liverpool. Crossing. Good ball. Riley didn't quite keep his feet. Here's Ford. And Splay waved on. This is Walker. Yes! Oh, Ray Walker! Brilliant! Tottenham's defence had been pull ragged. And it come off sort of their defender and dropped down in the mud. And I just followed uh, up play, just knocked it in front of me and just hit it. And just managed to go in the top corner-ish. Uh, so, yeah, it was lovely. Nice goal and uh, got everybody going. It was a great start, and the start we needed, really. And Walker has started to write another chapter in Port Vale's giant-killing history. A goal up against Tottenham from the first division. Uh, Terry Fennick concedes the free kick.
and it will be understandable if Tottenham's nerves begin to show. Walker, he's the man that Tottenham have got to stop, and Terry Fenwick seemed conscious of that. And Fenwick concedes a free kick. Well, they do say at Port Vale that if Ray Walker plays, Port Vale play. And uh, Phil Sproson, who's placed the ball for the free kick. He's got quite a lot of players to aim for. Instead chooses Kevin Steggles. Now forward. Waddle for Tottenham. Pushes off the challenge of Riley. Cut out by Hazel, and he needed to as well. And up and under from Bob Hazel. Fairclub's header. Well, it's not pretty to watch, but from Port Vale's point of view, it's effective. And now Walker in turn concedes a free kick. Waddle isn't too impressed. Followed by Fairclub. This is Ruddick. Tottenham have got four in the box. Fennick. Now Ruddock. Moran, little flick. Now Paul Moran's really developing in Tottenham's first team this season, isn't he? Terry Venable said before the game that he wasn't too impressed with the conditions, which is why they'd left out Osvaldo Ardiles. He's certainly got a lot to think about at the moment. Port Vale's free kick. Walker to take it. And it's dropped for Beckford! Yes, Brosson! It's 2-0! Oh, again, Tottenham were all over the place. They just didn't know how to cope. Walker's free kick. It was mayhem in the penalty area for 10 seconds, and it fell invitingly for Phil Sproson. Well, it was Sproson who jumped as well with the keeper. Beckford might have put it away. Attempted clearance and up into the top corner. It's 2-0. 25 minutes gone. And Tottenham are beginning to regret they ever heard of Port Vale. Well, Tony Parks having an extended run of 18 games after the injury to Ray Clements. But won't be too happy with that one. And neither will the management. And already Alan Harris is looking at his watch. Well, Phil Sprosson's family have an amazing record here at uh, Port Vale. His uncle Roy played a record 761 league games for Port Vale between 1950 and 1972. And Sprosson himself has already chalked up 400. Oh, Beckford's in again. They're all over the place. Ford. Yeah, oh, brilliant save. Headed by Beckford. The flag's up. I think the ball must have gone behind. Point blank. The effort by Beckford. Sproson's there, the header was by Reddick. And the referee has seen an offence. And a little respite for Tottenham. Well, this is the moment again. Gary Ford, who got round uh, the defender, that diving header by Beckford, and an absolutely fantastic save by Parks. But it had gone behind. That's the first half concluded, and Terry Venables will have to find some words of inspiration in the dressing room with his side 2 0 down here at Vale Park. Last year's beaten cup finalists start the second half. Hopefully, from Tottenham's point of view, there'll be a different attitude in this second 45 minutes. And the referee has signaled from quite a long way away that that is, in fact, a corner. And that's Tottenham's first corner. Oh, and it's fallen for Ruddock. Nicked away from him by Hughes. Now Waddle. 
Tottenham have stayed forward. Left foot cross, and finally safely into the hands of Grew. I think it was Hazel who got his head to it first. And Tottenham decide it's time to make a substitution. And they're pulling off the fullback, uh, Chris Hewton, and sending on number 14, David Howells, who's immediately gone into a forward position with instructions about how Tottenham should reorganise. And it looks like Gary Mabbott's gone back to right back. Fennick, faced by Robbie Earl, out wide to Mabbott. Paul Allen. Still hasn't got the better of the fullback. And the referee sees that as a free kick, although the linesman who was closer didn't. Darren Hughes came here on loan from Brighton back in 1987 and stayed. Well, Tottenham have pushed uh, 2 4 6 7 into Vale's penalty area as Waddle takes this. It's absolutely crowded. Oh, and there it is! Ruddock! That's made amends. And that might yet help Tottenham salvage something here. It was so crowded in that penalty area. Waddle took the free kick. And Ruddock, the man who got higher than everybody else, and buried it past Mark Grew. Neil Ruddock's first goal of the season, and it couldn't have come at a better time for Tottenham. Nineteen minutes gone in the second half, then. And Tottenham have a lifeline. Well, still plenty for Alan Harris and Terry Venables to reflect on. That's Moran. Finney. Oh, Finney and uh, Stegel's in the mix-up. Uh, Hughes, rather. Gives Tottenham possession. Gary Mabbott. Fennick. Tottenham have just got to get it into the box. Moran. Fairclough! Oh, desperate defending. And Fairclough, surely he pushed his marker, Earl. Teed up for Mabbott. And away by Hazel. Now Riley. What a stirring finish this is. Pursued by Ruddick. And he's going to outrun him. He's got Cole in the middle. And what a pity he didn't try and find him. And Terry Venables now surely knows that it's all over. This is injury time, stoppage time. And it's Vale in possession. And Walker wants it as ever. That'll do, he thinks. As far downfield as possible, gives Tottenham a throw. Right by their own corner flag. And there's to be no walk down Wembley way for Terry Venables this season Waddle oh pass back was intercepted by Riley wild shot by Walker and we've played over a minute of extra time John Rudge out of the dugout and there it is Port Vale have done it. The giant killers in the fourth round of the cup have beaten Tottenham by two goals to one. When the final whistle went, I, I turned to my father and tears were streaming down his face and tears were streaming down my face. And that's really um, an incident that I, I shall always cherish and, and as long as I live, I shall never ever forget that moment. And I think that's what makes football the, the, the absolutely tremendous game that it is. I don't think there's any other sport that could provide that type of emotion or that type of feeling and, and that's why it is the world's greatest game. A turning point really I think in the club's history because that put us really on the map. We had a lot of television coverage I mean it seemed to set the club alight. That actually for me was uh, the high point of being a Vale supporter. We became a proper football club shall we say and since then it's been up and up and up. It just gets into, into the players and the club's minds that you know we are a side that can beat any side on our day.